The Life and Sad Ending of Jane Russell Ernestine Jane Geraldine Russell was born June 21, 1921, in Bemidji, Minnesota. She was the eldest child and only daughter of the five children of Geraldine and Roy William Russell. Her brothers are Thomas, Kenneth, Jamie, and Wallace. Her father had been a first lieutenant in the U.S. Army and her mother an actress with the road troop. Her mother was also the subject of a portrait by Mary Bradish Titcomb, Portrait of Geraldine J., which received public attention when purchased by Woodrow Wilson. Russell's parents lived in Edmonton, Canada until shortly before her birth and returned to that city nine days after her birth, where they lived for the first one or two years of her life. The family then moved to Southern California, where her father worked as an office manager. Russell's mother arranged for her to take piano lessons. In addition to music, she was interested in drama and participated in stage productions at Van Nuys High School. Her early ambition was to be a designer of some kind until the death of her father in his mid-40s, when she decided to work as a receptionist after graduation. She also modeled for photographers and, at the urging of her mother, studied drama and acting with Max Reinhardt's theatrical workshop and with actress and acting coach Maria Uspenskaya. In 1940, Russell was signed to a seven-year contract by film mogul Howard Hughes and made her motion picture debut in The Outlaw, which was released in 1943, a story about Billy the Kid that went to great lengths to showcase her voluptuous figure. The movie was completed in 1941, but it was not released until 1943 in a limited release. Problems occurred with the censorship of the production code over the way her ample cleavage was displayed in the promotion of the film. Russell stood 5 feet 7 inches, or 1.7 meters, making her more statuesque than most of her contemporaries. She did not appear in another movie until 1946, when she played Joan Kenwood in Young Widow for Hunt Stromberg, who released through United Artist. The film went over budget by $600,000 and was a box office failure. In 1947, Russell attempted to launch a musical career. She sang with Kay Kaiser Orchestra on radio and recorded two singles with this band, As Long As I Live and Boing. She also cut a 78 RPM album that year for Columbia Records, Let's Put Out the Lights, which included eight torch ballads and cover art that included a diaphanous gown that for once put the focus more on her legs than on her breasts. Russell's career revived when she was cast as Calamity Jane opposite Bob Hope in The Pale Face, 1948, on loan out to Paramount. The film was a sizable box office hit, earning $4.5 million and becoming Paramount's most successful release of the year. Russell shot Montana Bell for Fidelity Pictures in 1948, playing Bell Star. The film was intended to be released by Republic Pictures, but the producer sold the film to RKO, who released it in 1952. Howard Hughes bought RKO Pictures and would be Russell's main employer for the next few years. At that studio, Russell co-starred with Groucho Marx and Frank Sinatra in a musical comedy, Double Dynamite, shot in 1948 and released in 1951. It was a critical and commercial failure. Hughes cast Russell opposite Robert Mitchum and Vincent Price in His Kind of Woman, 1951, a film noir originally directed by John Farrow in 1950, which would be reshot by Richard Fleischer the following year. Next, Russell did two more film noirs, The Las Vegas Story, 1952, with Price and Victor Mature, and Macau, 1952, with Mitchum. His Kind of Woman and Macau were minor hits, but both involved so much reshooting because of the interference of Hughes that they lost money. Paramount borrowed Russell for a reunion with Hope, Son of Pale Face, 1952, which was another hit. She had a cameo in Road to Bali, 1953. Russell played Dorothy Shaw 
in the hit film Gentlemen Prefer Blondes, 1953, opposite Marilyn Monroe for 20th Century Fox. The film was a huge success, Russell's biggest hit since The Outlaw, making over $5 million. Then Hughes produced Underwater, 1955, an adventure film with Russell and Richard Egan at RKO. It made $2 million, because, but because of its large cost, it was a financial flop. Her contract with Hughes ended in February 1954. In 1953, Russell and her first husband, former Los Angeles Rams quarterback Bob Waterfield, formed Russfield Productions. In March 1954, they signed a six-picture deal with United Artists to last over three years. Russell only had to appear in three of the films. Russ Field loaned out Russell's services for appearing as Amanda Lawrence in Foxfire, 1955, at Universal, opposite Jeff Chandler. Russell was paid $200,000 for her role and had the right to draw on Chandler's services for a film later for her own production company. The film was a moderate success, earning $2 million. Russell co-starred with Clark Gable in The Tall Men, 1955, at 20th Century Fox, one of the most popular films of the year, with earnings of $6 million. As an actor only, Russell made Hot Blood, 1956, with Cornell Wilde at Columbia, and The Revolt of Mamie Stover, 1956, at 20th Century Fox, in the latter playing a role meant for Marilyn Monroe. None of these films were particularly successful. Russell Field's last production was The Fuzzy Pink Nightgown, 1957, starring Russell, which was a box office failure. Russell moved into television, appearing in episodes of Colgate Theater, Westinghouse Desilu Playhouse, Death Valley Days, and The Red Skeleton Hour. Russell was referenced in a 1956 episode of The Honeymooners. In her later career, Russell made her first movie appearance in a number of years in Fate is the Hunter, 1964, in which she is seen as herself performing for the USO in a flashback sequence. She was second billed in two westerns, Johnny Reno, 1966, and Waco, same year, and starred in Cauliflower Cupids, filmed in 1966 but not released until 1970. Russell had a semi-recurring guest role in The Yellow Rose, 1983, on television, and guest starred on Hunter, 1986. In 1989, Russell received the Women's International Center Living Legacy Award. Her handprints and footprints are immortalized at Groman's Chinese Theater, and she has a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame at 6850 Hollywood Boulevard. In her personal life, Russell was married three times, first to Bob Waterfield from 1943 until their divorce in July 1968. Two months after their divorce, Russell married actor Roger Barrett. He died of a heart attack only two months later in November 1968. She married real estate broker John Calvin Peoples on January 31, 1974, living with him until his death from heart failure on April 9, 1999. Russell resided in the Santa Maria Valley along the central coast of California. Sadly, she died at her home in Santa Maria of a respiratory-related illness in February of 2011. She was 89 years old. She was cremated and her ashes scattered at sea.